Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. Yeah, there's this like rumor that is, you know, not corroborated by science that this arc storm event is going to hit us in the next week or two in California, which is this massive storm. So this is the 200 mile cross Pacific jet stream. Oh yeah, I saw that. With the, you know, very hot and moist Pacific. So a lot of energy, the, the ocean temperatures are hotter than they've ever been on record. So uh, this causes the air to move more quickly. It causes more moisture to go into the air and then it gets moved and pushed all the way to the Western United States. And so some people have said, wait, this is gonna lead to an arc storm event. So what's an arc storm event? In 1861 to 1862 in California, there was an atmospheric river event for 43 days. So water poured down for 43 days straight, completely flooded the Central Valley, Sacramento, Los Angeles. All of these regions were underwater for six months, at the time causing $100 million in damage. And the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, did a uh, analysis and what they projected would happen if such an event were to happen again this day and age. These sorts of events are predicted historically to happen every 150 to 200 years. But based on the warm temperature in the oceans we see, it's now predicted that these will happen every, call it 25 to 50 years or much sooner. And these high temperatures are driving a higher increased frequency and severity of these sorts of events. So the most recent model called ArcStorm 2.0, which was an analysis done by the USGS, showed that if this sort of an event were to occur again, it would drive over a trillion dollars in damages in California. So based on the image that you just saw, which showed this massive 200 mile an hour, hot, wet jet stream plowing towards the Western US, a lot of people on Twitter started speculating, it's ArcStorm 2.0, it's coming our way. And a lot of meteorologists have looked at the ensemble, which is the simulation model forecasts and said, you know what, it's not gonna be ArcStorm 2.0, it's gonna be wet over the next couple of weeks. It could be very wet, but this isn't the big mega flood event that everyone's been worried about. So rest assured, it's not imminent. I know a lot of people are talking about it saying it is imminent, but I do think it's worth being aware of. Well, that felt like a big build up with a big letdown at the end. <laughs> I was expecting to finally get some uh, definitive dates on when all that poop in Los Angeles is going to be washed off the streets. The CIA recently declassified a book that tells us how the world will end called The Adam and Eve Story. Part one is up on my profile, but right now I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen. This isn't the first time this theory was published. Ten years before The Adam and Eve Story, Charles Hapgood wrote Earth's Shifting Crust. It discussed continental drift, which was first dismissed as pseudoscience, but then later proven right. He then released The Path of the Pole, in which he suggested that the Earth's poles are constantly moving, which was again initially deemed false, but then proven true many years later. Notice a pattern here. This book also states that there occurred a rapid shift of the Earth's poles sometime around 10,000 BC, which is also the start of our current civilization, in which the North and South Poles both rapidly shifted to different parts of the world. What the Adam and Eve story claims is that this shift was supposed to happen again around the year 2000, so according to it, we're overdue. This book describes in detail what will happen during this shift, and it's far worse than any apocalypse I've seen in a movie before. I'm talking history's biggest earthquake tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, volcanoes erupting all everywhere at once. The North Pole would eventually locate to the Bay of Bengal, east of India. Meanwhile, Antarctica would eventually unfreeze and emerge with tropical foliage, meaning that Antarctica may have actually been habitable in the past, which would actually explain all the strange pyramids and ancient structures that they've allegedly been trying to hide over there. Putting up part three in a bit, I promise it's the last one, but check me out for more. I wonder if that's why the Mayans assumed that the world would end around 2012 and stopped their calendar there. Maybe they thought that was whenever the pole shift was going to happen. Yeah, it. this is one of those things that you watch and you, you think, maybe I need to take a break from this stuff for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty terrifying to think we could just be sitting here and enjoying a nice, beautiful day, and all of a sudden the poles decide to, to shift and destroy everything. It's pretty terrifying. Even if it's going to happen slowly, it, it's going to destroy everything. So even if it's not that quick whoo, whoo, pole shift, like, uh, like the other theory that I've heard, it's still going to destroy everything and kill everybody, it looks like. So either way, it's not good. Did you know that in 1983, the CIA released a document explaining how you're able to travel into the past and into the future? This document also laid out that remote viewing is real, that astral projection is real, and that we're living in a hologram. To fully understand, we need to go back in time to the beginning of why the CIA started investigating this in the first place. So it all started right at the end of the Cold War. And at the end of the Cold War, the US believed that Russia was trying to psychically train soldiers this information led the United States to start a squad within the United States Army to investigate the psychic ability of human beings. In a beautiful display of American intelligence, Russia actually wasn't even investigating psychic research at this time. 
But then, once they figured out that the US were investigating it, they had to investigate it themselves. And if all of this sounds super familiar to you, it's because it's actually the plot of a Hollywood movie starring George Clooney and Kevin Spacey. Which is super hilarious, by the way, so you should definitely add it to your watch list. However, I digress, so let's get back to the paper. And for your information, you can look up this entire paper. It's free for everyone online. Just type in analysis and assessment of gateway process. So the key to understanding all of this craziness is the first understanding that the left side of your brain and the right side of your brain are actually vibrating at different rates. And what the Army and CIA realized is that if you could, what they call hemisync, get those vibrations in alignment, you could tune in to different frequencies that the universe provided for you. Think of it like two cell phones. If one of them is operating on a different frequency or telecommunications, it's not going to be able to interface with the other one. However, if you do, then that's where the magic actually happens. Another piece of research that they figured out is that we actually can't even see the absoluteness of infinity. We are only subject to a very small portion of infinity, which we call time space. And then only by hemisyncing could we actually access the other portions of infinity. Now hemisyncing is a little bit more of an in-depth and in-tune process. If you've never done any sort of meditation before, that's where you're going to want to start. And speaking of, because I totally didn't write this script and designed to go a certain direction, I can provide you access to some free and easy to use tools that will help you begin your meditation journey. I don't know if I believe just because the government says that they were researching this stuff. I don't know that I believe that it's actually people are capable of tuning in to all these different frequencies and different dimensions and stuff and seeing things that we normally can't see. I know there's a lot of people that do believe in that stuff and I could totally be completely 100% wrong. I've just never seen anything that's that I would consider evidence to lead me in that direction. But it's still fascinating to think about. I do believe in the strength and, and the power of the human mind and I do believe that it's a lot more capable than what we give it credit for. I just don't know how to tune mine right, I guess. <laughs> hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. In the car and, and she says, Mommy, this is just like where I died. Like, real excited, not upset or anything, just kind of very matter of fact. And, At two years old? Uh, yeah, yeah, she was about two and three quarters. So then you say, honey, uh, you didn't die. I said, I said, well, Leah, what are you talking about? She goes, this, she says, I was in my car and it fell off the bridge in the water and I died. And so I pulled off the road because I was a little <laughs> stressed. And she said, um, and I said, well, well, where was mama? And she said, you weren't with me that time. Which this is what your two year old yeah, said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did. That got the exclamation points going. And um, I said, well, who was driving the car then? And she said, I was big. I could reach the pedals. And she has no clue that you need pedals to drive a car. She's two. She's in the car seat. You know, there's like no way she could know that. And, and I said, well, well, what happened? And, and she described, she said, well, I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And she is absolutely a fanatic about seatbelts. Everyone in our presence that knows us, she is going to make sure they have a seatbelt on. She will not get in the car without one. And neither will anyone else. And she said, well, I didn't have my seatbelt on. And I fell out of the car. And she said, and she put her hand up on her hand. She said, mommy, I was laying on the rocks. I could feel the rocks on my head. And she said, and see the shiny bridge. And she points up, she's looking up. And she doesn't see the shiny bridge and the bubbles going up. She could see the bubbles. Now she has no recol she has never seen television at that point in her life at all. And sure. how would she have any knowledge of bubbles rising? You know, she doesn't swim, she doesn't put her face in the water. And she said, I could see the bubbles going up and see the sun on the bridge through the water. This is what your two year old told you. Yeah. This reminds me of a story that my mother told me about whenever I was about three years old. She says, uh, I was standing up in the back seat of the car that tells you what kind of parent she was. And we we're driving down the road and I was looking out the window and I kept pointing to roads and saying, Mama, I made that road. And I claimed that I was an older black man working on these roads. And then she says, one day, much later than this, I grew up in a small, small town with a mostly white population. One day we're in the grocery store and a black lady walks up to me, an older black lady, and bends down and pinches me on the cheek and says, oh, aren't you just the cutest little thing? And I started apparently screaming and ran out of the store and was telling my mama, that lady touched me, she's dirty. And that was the first time my mama realized it dawned on her then. That's the first time I would ever seen a person of color. So uh, interesting to think that before I'd ever seen a person of color, I had a memory of being a person of color and working on these roads. I don't remember this. This is just what my mom's told me a hundred times. How many kids do you have? Four. You have three? I have four. How? You, Legacy, Lolo, and Adrian. 
But we don't. But you don't have four kids. Why? <laughs> oh. Why not? You just don't live live with you. Where do you live? In Sand Springs. In Sand Springs? Yep. With who? My grandfather. Mm. Well, when you go to bed, you're here. So, you live I'm with me. I'm not going the night. You stay the night with me? Yeah, I stay the night every night. Cause Where? At your house. Because my grandfather died. Ooh. When did your grandfather die? Um, well, since our house is bleeding everywhere, um, inside of it, remember? Whenever, whenever it, our house is on the street, remember? On the street? Um, your house on the street bleeds? No, my house. My mom. She climbed up there. She turned into a monster. And she died. So now she's dead. Your mom's dead? Yeah. My grandfather and my mom. So now I live with you. What's because your name? Angeli. Angeli Grace died. Who's Angeli? Me. That's why you have three kids. This specific one I've done some digging on and it seems like everyone is pointing in the wrong direction on this. They're trying to claim that there's a woman who uh, was unalived in a in a house in this specific town and they're claiming that this little girl is remembering being this woman. But the woman died after the little girl was born. So I think they're heading the wrong direction on that one. So let me show you what's going on on a flight right now. Today is January 24th at 2.35 p.m. Right now, there is a flight from Munich, Germany to San Francisco, and that's this guy right here, okay? DLH-458, from Munich, Germany, all the way to the United States, San Francisco, California. Look how high of an arch this is going, okay? Keep that in mind. On the Gleason's Flat Earth Map, look at a direct line of sight that is going to. It goes right over Greenland, right above my thumb. And that is a completely straight line to San Francisco from Germany right over Greenland. And if you can see right here on the globe, it has to do an arch. It has to come way out of the way over Greenland to come back down here. If you know anything about traveling, you know that the shortest distance to point A to point B is going to be the most fuel efficient. I can tell you right now that airplanes are going the shortest distance they possibly can to get to that point. I want you to notice all the flights that are in the northern hemisphere above the equator. Look at the difference in the number of flights. And all of the ones in the northern hemisphere have a huge arc to them, the ones that are way up here. Yet down here, everything is completely straight whenever you click on the planes. And nothing is traveling way down here over the oceans. You can literally do your own research at flightradar24.com. Just look up flights from Sydney to Rio de Janeiro. Every one of them stop in Los Angeles. Look at the distance they have to travel. However, it makes complete sense that the emergency flight from Sydney to Rio de Janeiro had to stop in Los Angeles and all subsequent stops stop in LA. I wish that someone could make these flight patterns make sense to me. I know that this is supposed to be proof of a flat earth. It doesn't prove a flat earth to me just simply because I've seen too much other evidence that shows that the earth is a globe. It definitely makes me think this doesn't make any sense. Why are the flight patterns like this unless we are on a flat plane? It wouldn't make sense. So somebody, uh, airplane pilot, helicopter, somebody down in the comments, let me know why does that make sense. This treasure hunter found a half billion dollar treasure of gold bars and the FBI stole it from him. In 2018, Dennis Parada, a treasure hunter from Pennsylvania, was looking for a treasure of Civil War era gold, allegedly buried in 1863 when a huge Union shipment of gold bars was under threat of being hijacked and was hidden somewhere in the forest of Elk County. One day, he discovered a mysterious entrance under a rock and used advanced radar technology to scan it, which revealed the presence of a very large 
large amount of heavy metal similar to gold hidden inside it. He promptly informed the authorities, who dispatched an FBI team for investigation. One night, Parado was instructed to remain in his car as the agents researched the site. The next day, they asserted that no findings had been made and left. But Parada came back to scan the cave and discovered that the signal had vanished. He felt like he was robbed and decided to sue the FBI for having unlawfully taken the gold and concealed information about its discovery. What do you think Parada should have done? That's completely his own fault. You don't ever, 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 ever let the government know what you're doing. The government shouldn't even know you exist. <laughs> If you can get away with it, do everything under the dark of night. All joking aside, that guy should have just went in there at night and done some digging and taken his uh, newfound fortune and, and kept his mouth shut. <laughs> Conspiracy theories around Taylor Swift rigging the Super Bowl are swirling. Let me explain. It seems to have started earlier in January with Fox News talking head Jesse Waters floating the idea that the pop star is a government psyop on his show. Well, around four years ago, the Pentagon Psychological Operations Unit floated turning Taylor Swift into an asset during a NATO meeting. He then played a clip from this 2019 international conference on cyber conflict to back up his claim. So I include Taylor Swift in here because she's, um, you know, she's a fairly influential online person. I don't know if you've heard of her. However, the woman in the clip shown indeed does not work for the Pentagon, as Fox's Waters said. She was a researcher at John Hopkins at the time and was giving a presentation about how influential people can combat misinformation online. Days after he made the allegation, a Pentagon spokesperson denied the claim, using Taylor Swift lyrics to respond saying, quote, as for this conspiracy, we're going to shake it off. Swift endorsed Biden in 2020 and urged her followers to register to vote. This is also being used by many online to inform their conspiracy theories about Taylor Swift. They see her relationship with Kansas City Chief star Travis Kelsey and the media focus on their relationship as reason to believe she's being used as a psyop to rig the Super Bowl and influence Americans to vote for Joe Biden this November. Then this past Monday, former presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy wrote on X, quote, I wonder who's going to win the Super Bowl next month. And I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially culturally propped up couple this fall. There's definitely some Taylor Swift and Democratic Party commingling going on. We know that the Democrats are paying certain influencers on TikTok because they just had that guy come out and say that they agreed to pay him $50,000 to say something good about Biden. And he was a channel that's typically aimed towards the other direction politically. So we know that they're paying influencers and stuff. We know that's going on, and it's probably the Republican Party who's doing it too. They're just not as successful at it, or they don't focus as much on the social networking stuff. But it wouldn't surprise me or anyone, I don't think, at this point to find out that Taylor Swift was, was a government side. A lot of the new science data has come out about Mars now. So first they were just saying Mars was a cold, dry rock. So I kept saying, if it's just a cold, dry rock, why are we spending literally collectively on the planet? as a planet trillions of dollars to go there trillions why would you keep spending money to go who's approving these checks then when i saw india raise three million to send a, um, a satellite there i said there's something really going on when you look into the new science data you find out that first they were saying cold dry rock now they're saying flowing water now they're saying lakes hectares worth of lakes of water now they're also saying it's salt water brine right and they're saying now that wow we can see where rivers were and oceans were and there's still huge pockets of massive amounts of liquid water and then all of a sudden they're saying now before they were saying no oxygen now they're saying oh there's oxygen if you're like 10 feet or below it's almost breathable it would be like being about 14,000 feet above sea level then they were saying no your, your dna would unravel because of the radiation because there's no magnetic field then they're yeah. saying now all of a sudden wait a minute we do discover a magnetic field all this makes me think is the phrase trust the science <laughs> the science is constantly changing it depends on uh whatever propaganda they're wanting to put down our throat that's what the science says of the day so if, if the science says a and they want us to do b well all of a sudden the science says b now wow look at that it's uh, miraculous the science says b so uh we're all on to this i don't I don't know what to think about Mars, but I don't believe anything. I don't believe the first thing or the second thing because everything coming out of NASA's mouth, I, I just see as a lie. Pyramids were built for time travel. It says so here in the Express. Time travel, shock, speed of light, proof of aliens, etc. Now also here on the Quartz site, it says that physics time travel isn't just possible. That's because the Anunnaki put Quartz as well as other crystals inside the pyramids 
for a time travel device. Now we know that because we can see in Abydos the carvings of a helicopter, etc., and a plane. And a plane. Now, who else has seen that? Yes, Leonardo da Vinci did visit uh, Egypt, and that's why he had the time travel knowledge to build and design a helicopter. That's an interesting theory. It's pretty fascinating to think that da Vinci could have traveled through time and seen these things and that these weren't inventions that he was sketching out, but he was trying to reinvent things he had seen and witnessed with his own eyes using the technology of the time, building everything out of wood and whatnot. A very, very fun theory, I'll, I'll say that. Probably bullcrap, but really fun theory. Randy Quaid thought it was going to keep him alive if he stood up in front of the entire world and called out Hollywood. What he didn't realize is that there are some fates worse than death. And in his case, they first made him look crazy and then made him crazy. When Randy Quaid first started talking about Star Whackers, had he said it differently and called them exactly what they were, people murdering actors in Hollywood, maybe people would have looked at what he was saying in a different light. But because he called them Star Whackers, people looked at him like he was crazy. And while he may have preserved his life, he was worn down and worn down and worn down to the point that it broke him completely. Regardless, what he said at this press conference is nonetheless eye-opening. Check this shit out. For the past 20 years, my wife, Evie, and I have been the victims of criminal activities perpetrated by a small network of individuals who are out to destroy us personally, professionally, and financially. This network of individuals is manipulating the banking system and the criminal justice system for the purposes of sabotaging our credit and our credibility. We are not criminals, nor are we fugitives from justice, nor are we crazy. We are simply artists and filmmakers who are being racketeered on. We believe there are to be a malignant tumor of star whackers in Hollywood how many people do you know personally? But I don't know what you guys' opinion of Randy Quaid is. I think that he is probably in my top 10 favorite comedic actors, just simply based off his role in the National Lampoon Vegas Vacation and Christmas Vacation movies. Uh, his cousin Eddie is just flawless. I've watched for a decade and a half where this guy has just been in and out of legal trouble, destroying hotel rooms, uh, saying crazy stuff. He's always got crazy hair and, and looks like a psychopath and, and saying a bunch of nonsense. And it, this makes sense. I mean, this guy was once a, a, a well-respected, highly sought-after actor. You know, when he was given that speech, he doesn't come, ac come across as crazy. He comes across to me as somebody that's trying to clear his name and, and get some truth out there. So it's sad to see what his life has turned out to be because I, I just I really really like the guy as an actor unfortunately this is one of those we'll probably never find out what's really going on with the guy the propaganda machine's gonna chew him up and spit him out why does it feel like we are living in a freaking episode of Black Mirror this is crazy check out this video from the World Economic Forum it is absolutely insane Even you can't and freaks me how out productive you've been. your memo is finished your inbox is under control, and you're feeling sharper than you have in a decade. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favorite song, sending chills up your spine as the music begins to play. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that this appears real whenever video. you're overloaded with pleasure. Your state of brainwave activity decreasing in the temporal regions of your brain. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. See your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. This is a real video. But then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity 
and shift your attention back to the present. What the? You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, which have earned you another performance bonus. You head home, jamming to the music, with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. When you arrive at work the next day, a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Uh, Along with emails, text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. This is the World Economic Forum. This is stupid. One of your co-workers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your co-worker and the people he has been working with. What? While you know you're innocent Hell. of any crime, you've been secretly working with him They're on a new startup venture. looking at your brain waves. Shaking, you remove your earbuds. <laughs> what do you think? Is it a future you're ready for? What the heck? You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Man, when will they disband this World Economic Forum crap? This is terrifying. This is what the, this is the future they want for us. They want to be able to read our brain waves and keep record of them. Tracking our phones isn't enough. Yeah, this this is um, probably one of the most terrifying videos I've seen. This right here shows you what's going to happen if you put that Neuralink in your head. That's what they're going to be using that for. They're going to be studying your brain waves and keeping track, make sure you don't have no bad thoughts. Yeah, I definitely won't be getting a Neuralink. Definitely not, definitely not. But guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the clips that we watched together. I, I enjoyed them. I hope you all come back to see me for the next one tomorrow. I'm going to put the uh, link to the Discord is going to be down in the video. Click that, jump over there and check it out. We've been working hard on it and... Uh, all it needs now is to be filled up with a bunch of people. I will. Tonight is actually my my wife's birthday. So we're going to go out and eat and everything. And whenever I get back later on tonight, I may jump in the Discord and, and chat with a few people. So look for me in there. That being said, we'll go ahead and end it here. I hope you guys have a great, fantastic rest of your Friday. And I will see you tomorrow.